Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being your show, we're talking about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Fear the Walking Dead. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, this episode has done a lot of interesting things that, for, for one... I kept expecting the entire episode, jumping around a little bit, I kept expecting there to be a swerve in this episode, like, I was like, every time, as the episode was going on, I was like, okay, is Charlie playing, like, a Black Widow role, is she, like, you know, the infiltrator, and she's playing, which she kind of was, but I kept thinking, like, oh, there was gonna be, like, some major swerve, like, I figured the entire time she was manipulating Ollie, but it turns out, I was like, oh, what's the great manipulation, and then it's like, no, there isn't one, I think she genuinely, genuinely, uh, and was genuine to him later on when she told him the truth and she opened up to him. Because do correct me in the comments down below, but this is the first time Charlie's ever been around someone her own age since the beginning of her, since her introduction back in season four. I don't, um, Ollie's like the closest person in age to her. Like, so I think being kind of having to, because she had to grow up in this world. I mean, much, I mean, they, you know, very much like everyone in the world beyond. She had to grow up in this world and they mainly know this world more than they do the other world. So, what everything was before the fall. And so, Charlie said, like, oh, she just wanted a normal life, which from the very beginning, I was like, oh, this is all BS. Because I thought it was interesting because when Ollie was sent out to get a butterfly, and I was like, oh, that seems weird. But what the butterfly represents. And, you know, Howard's saying that it's a representation of, how it's a representation of kind of like the, oh, you you go from a caterpillar to a butterfly because, you know, you change into something better. And that's what this tower and world kind of did for Strand and Howard and so many others. And so that's why this uh, catching this butterfly is so important. And especially for Ollie, because he wants to be a ranger. And at first I was like, I'm curious. I mean, first and foremost, I, I, I mean, it makes sense, but it's still interesting to know how much of... Strand is carrying over over all that Virginia stuff. I think that's fascinating. You just didn't know that. I don't know if they ever said rain. Maybe they said Rangers, and it just been a while, so I didn't remember at the beginning of the season his people being known as that. Like uh, they make him. Um, maybe they mention it offhandedly, but this time around they're making a point of it because Ollie's saying like, "No, I want to be a Ranger," and it's just it's just interesting to know. Like, right, we know the history of what that was. I mean, obviously. Uh, Strand himself was one when he was working with Virginia and all that, but when it's all said and done, Ollie came across Charlie, and he was suspicious of her, because he's still in the dark about all of this, so I guess he's still relatively new in the tower and doesn't know the ins and outs of everything, because he knows Charlie, because he's like, hey, uh, oh no, he, uh, because Howard was like, oh, that's one of Morgan's people, and, and he's like, what's this all about, because he doesn't know about all, like, the Morgan stuff. Uh, the complicated history between the tower and a lot of the people outside of the tower. And so, John knows Charlie, but he's like, yeah, I've only known her for a short while. It's like, yeah, because John joined the crew, but only for a little while. So he didn't really get too attached to other, uh, to the other, uh, some of the other characters. So, but Charlie gets brought into the tower and she says she just wants a normal life. Because she's like, I looked at what day it is and it's like it's my birthday and I'm going to be I'm 13 now and uh, this is all I've ever known so she's like I want to have some form of a normal life so she has to prove herself while Ali's also proving himself because like uh right the team they sent out to get some elevator parts ended up dying and I'm well because the elevator parts are meant to be them fixing the elevator after everything went down last time Morgan was in the tower um, other than that, I don't, who knows what else Strand is looking into, but he's away like the entire episode, and so Charlie volunteers to prove herself, because she needs to prove herself, because it's all part of the plan, and that's what I'm curious too, did Morgan suggest this, or did Charlie volunteer for it? Because I'm, I'm curious in the long run, because did she do it because Morgan asked her to do it? Like, would he, I don't, I, that's my thing. I don't see Morgan asking Charlie to do that. I'm assuming, like, he was trying to find, a, maybe he did. I don't know. Because it almost pits 
Morgan and Strand against you. You lean more towards Morgan, but you think, like, right, it might be that terrible thing of, like, there are going to be some things you have to do that you're not going to be proud of in this fight against Strand. It's like, I mean, Morgan's already kind of gotten to that point before. I mean, he literally tried to kill Strand and, you know, he poisoned him and everything. So, not 100% the Morgan we've, well, we've always followed since the OG Walking Dead, you know, so... I don't know, it's just, it's interesting. Um, but on the journey there, obviously Ollie doesn't trust Charlie. In fact, Howard doesn't trust her. So he's like, right, I need you to keep an eye on her and find out why she really came to the tower. He's like, I want to kind of believe her. Maybe there is some truth to it, but Morgan might have sent her here on purpose. So, but the entire time they're together, um, they, you know, get to know so much about each other. They go to that bowling alley and he ends up teaching her how to bowl. Once again, she's never had a regular normal life because when we got introduced to Charlie, I mean, I didn't even think about that too. Like, right, she, in this episode, she's literally doing what she did from the beginning. She infiltrated uh, the stadium uh, and, you know, manipulated them. And it's like, right, she was doing the same thing. And maybe that's why she was like, right, I don't want to hurt you, Ali, because she was in that position where, like, right, she killed Nick. So much stuff went down at the stadium because of her. So because of that past mistake, she doesn't want history repeating itself. She was told to do something for Morgan, but she didn't want, like, now that she's gotten to know Ollie, because a lot of those people in the tower, yes, there's people she knows and cares about. There are people there, like June, Howard, and everyone, but it's still the thing, not June and Howard, uh, June, uh, John Sr., and uh, God, I'm trying to think of Sarah's brother's name now. He was in the episode. I keep. I almost want to keep saying Wade. It's not. Nevertheless, I digress. Um, but that I think that's what really sparked it inside of her. Like, right, I don't want to be that person again. I don't want to make that mistake again where someone's going to get hurt because of what I did. It's happened before, and she didn't want it to happen again. And so... When the time came, she ended up telling Ollie the truth. Morgan told me to sneak in here, turn off all the lights so that they could get past the walkers because that way uh, Grace and the baby could sneak out. That seemed like to be the main crux of all this. But to be fair, <clears throat> I, I, even I'm like, is that true? Because Morgan was told to kind of wait while Alicia goes, like, get the forces. I guess it's like, right, in case things go super sideways, I need to go ahead and get Grace and the baby out while I have the chance. Though part of me wonders, like, did Charlie say and tell Ali everything? I, I, I'd assume she did, but... Even learning about Ali, that, you know, his dad died from um, radiation poison of all the stuff out here, and he ended up... He's like, right, I was there for my dad at the end. But when he was going to leave Charlie behind, the reason why he decided not to is because I wasn't there for someone I cared about. He lot, He's like, I was, you know, it was so much, like, weight on top of me. Like, when my dad got sick, I left. I wasn't around there because I got, I got scared and I didn't want to see my dad like that. And so I wasn't with him in the end. And that's his biggest regret. And he didn't want to kind of leave Charlie to her fate. Because it's like, right, there's so much out there she wants to see. And she says, like, right, we can, we don't have to be connected to Strand or Morgan. We can just, like, go and find our own way. But um, especially because I think this all ties into when Charlie sees what he did is to those, um, to those uh, stalkers. Because it's like, right, you, I saw what you did. And he was like, right, I had to do what I had to do. His entire motivation is we got to do whatever it takes to protect the tower. That's why he was going to leave Charlie to die. But, and I think that once again feeds into Charlie being like, right, having to do whatever it takes to survive, like, that comes at such a large price that I just, I don't want to be a part of something like that anymore. Where it's like, now it's like, right, you you yourself could get hurt, because not everyone in the tower who works for Strand, who believes in all of this, is a bad person. There are people out there just trying to find a way to survive, and so... Given the opportunity, Ollie ends up, once again, coming back for her and saving her. And he's like, right, we could do this. He's like, I'm not scared of Howard or Strand. We'll find a way. 
and then Charlie passes out. Once again, I, the entire episode, I'm like, okay, she's swerving you. This is like, she just happens to randomly pass out. Come on. Then we find, and then when like the radiation, when Grace and June came out, I'm like, did Charlie tell them something and they're playing along with this? But then you see her skin later on. It's like, oh, she legitimately got radiation, boy. Because for Ali, it was almost like, wait, there's no way that happened because... Like, she was careful, but it's like, right, when it comes to radiation, there's no level of being careful. Because a lot of those walkers in there were heavily radiated. Um, I don't know if they're necessarily the same ones from the pit that Arnold came across last episode, but probably just being in that general area of them killing them probably, like, spread some of that radiation onto her. Especially because partway through it, she lost her mask, and she was probably exposed to a lot more of that. Because... She probably she probably had to kill a lot of those walkers up front and personal, whereas Ali was able to shoot a lot of them from the distance. So, and when they do get back, Howard, it's like, okay, so why'd you bring Charlie back? He had already made a mistake of going on the radio, being like, yeah, I'm leaving her behind because it's like, right, what you thought, but now he has to change the story. He's like, no, 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 she. She wasn't sitting here by Morgan like her story was true. And he's like, almost like, can I really trust you? Because it's like, right, once she's, uh, once tomorrow comes, we're going to send her out. It's like, no, she needs to stay here. She's sick. He's like, the fact of the matter is Howard's all about protecting this tower. And it makes sense. Him, I mean, he stayed in this place for so long on his own. And then he saw Strand's vision of this world that it's like, right, Howard is, you know, obsessed about protecting it and keeping everything copacetic, you know, because he is someone that believes in Strand and I guess believes in who he's become in this tower. So I guess almost giving up on this tower will almost like be giving up on who he's become in the process. Because it, it's sad, like, this isn't the Howard we met at the end of season uh, six. Uh, almost like that complicated thing of... I mean, because even Strand's going through his levels of contemplating what he's going to do. It seems like he weaves in and out of trying to be a better person and then not being a better person. I mean, to be fair, he struggled with that the entire series. But it's just like his descent into this dictatorship madness... Um, seems even more extreme than previous examples of him, like, bobbing and weaving between good and evil. But, Howard's even saying, like, right, when uh, Victor comes back, I think there's a good conversation we're going to have about you becoming your first day as a ranger and stuff like that. Which, for Ali, it doesn't mean what it used to mean anymore. Because now he realizes, like, right, the way the tower is set up, it's not, it's not good the way it's like right someone that's sick like charlie just to protect the tower is like we're gonna kick her out um ollie started to see the because even him becoming a ranger it was just him to fill the void in his heart he needed something to he thought it would it would fill the hole from not being there when his dad died like leaving his dad alone to die alone and i think for him he he thought it was like right i'll, I'll be in this position and it will make all that pain go away and i'll i'll feel better you know but it was just a distraction, a means of something to work towards to focus on to make himself feel better about everything. And so he spends time with um, Charlie. And I was like, wow, this whole her getting radiation poisoning is legit. It's serious. It's not like some act or something. So they're spending time together. He even opened up all the butterflies because from the very beginning, uh, Charlie made that point of it's kind of messed up. Yes, these uh, butterflies live for only an hour, but shouldn't they be able to live their life beautifully without being in prison for that? Like, oh, like, d your life is so short. Shouldn't it be free and beautiful rather than being captured? Especially when you apparently only live for an hour. It's kind of messed up. And... Now that's all kind of coming back full circle and Ali's got the room full of butterflies and he's spending that time with Charlie and it once again it's beautiful. It's like this like oh it's like a heartwarming like this would be like a nice like romantic comedy drama like if this was any other story but it's The Walking Dead so it's going to be uber depressing and I was just waiting at any point in time once again for the swerve but there never really was one. And especially when Ali was like, right, I'll do it for you. And he goes and cuts off, tries to cut off the light. But Howard was waiting for him. And to be fair, he's like, oh, Ali attacked him. It's like, you were going to shoot him, weren't you? Not unless you're going to be like, there was no way you were going to just let him live from the beginning. And he was like, oh, Ali attacked me. It's like, you pointed a gun and you were going to shoot him. Uh, it ended up saving you the bullet, but still. Um, and 
I was like, at first I was like, okay, please tell me you're just going to lock him up. It's like, no, you're just going to toss him off the edge, which you're like, okay, that's just happening a lot. Uh, that dude Garcia, they claim Garcia did that because he didn't want to suffer. But you're like, is that true? Or did Howard do that? Uh, if so, that's, uh, that, that's interesting to know that that's their go-to way because how I was trying to justify been like, well, Garcia probably wanted his life to matter instead of just dying and being, well, June's like, right. He didn't want to be in pain. And Howard's probably like, no, 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 no. Like he probably did it because all he ever wanted to do was protect this place. Like he said, and now in death, he gets to do it. Kind of the brainwashing that people go through because it's like, right, is it do you really protect this place so wholeheartedly because you strongly believe in it, or is it because you're like, I don't want to be out there, so I kind of have to sip the Kool Aid of what this place is? But, um, Howard throws Ollie off the end, you know, Charlie was heartbroken by that. Once again, it's like young love, so so short lived, and I'm like. Dude, this season is the season of introduce a character and kill them the same episode. Wasn't Home Dude's name the dude that Alicia was? I mean, we got him back later on in the show. Like, he's made two appearances. Like, when we got uh, Alicia's backstory and what happened uh, after the bombs dropped, the first episode of the season, and him as a walker. Like, he made two subsequent appearances after dying, obviously. So, I'm assuming we might see Ali again, but him as a walker, most likely. Um, if he does make another appearance, um, but it's like, man, cause they just did it last episode with Paul. I'm like, Jesus, that this is back to back episodes of introducing a character just to kill them off. I was like, wow, that's, that's interesting. Cause like, I feel like that doesn't happen that often in the walking dead. I think most recently would be the example of at least a character you follow around a good chunk. Like you did Ollie and Paul, you got to know their backstory, but I got, that's also the part of point of this world where like right no one is necessarily safe but the fact is that because there was the, that guy most recently oh god it's the actor who played agent petty in ozark that his character in he was in two maybe three episodes i think he was in two episodes and then like the next episode like there was his dead body getting eaten by walkers or whatever or like ripped to pieces i think so he had technically like three appearances in the show. Uh, I, I'm trying to remember. Like, I feel like it's not that often that it's just a thing of yeah, like a character pops up. Usually, you'll 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 be recurring at least a few times, even if you get killed off eventually. Do correct me in the comments down below. I feel like that probably happens more in this series than it does any other. But once again, I could be completely mistaken. Um, but nevertheless. Uh, Charlie was going to go after Howard, and Howard's like, no, he came after me, he had no choice, and then John Sr. is like, right, uh, we got to do whatever we can to protect this place, and June's like, are you, what are you talking about? He's like, right, this place is good, like, it's the only way to protect us from the outside world. She's like, you're talking about what happened when your, where your son died, so, which is interesting, because from the beginning, John Sr. wanted to leave, June was kind of the one that was reluctant not to leave, but also she's like, right, these circumstances kind of prevent us from leaving, but also she didn't want to leave. She's had that tendency before. I mean, even in the bunker, she kept making an excuse so that her and John Sr. would stay down there. That whole storyline. So, now it almost feels like the roles are reversed. And Howard's planning on killing Charlie. But you have, you have um, June stepping in because it's like, no, no, no. You can't and won't kill him. You know why? Because, I mean, you won't kill uh, Charlie because... If you try and kill me, like, could you have to kill me to get through her? Because if you do anything, I will kill you. And Victor won't get mad at me because Victor needs me because I'm the doctor here. So if people get hurt or whatever, if something happens, like, I am worth more to Victor than you are. Which, you know, is kind of an ego blow for Howard. Because it's like, right, we built this together. I've been by his side. I've been his right-hand man. And for her to say that probably rubs him the wrong way. Besides, Charlie's sick and who knows how long she has left to live. So, um talking to John Sr., he's like, right, I don't actually believe all this, but I need Howard to believe I do, because I need to get close enough to uh, Victor so that I can speak in his ear, because if I can get to his ear and not just have Howard in his ear, maybe I can change things around here. That's the only way to change things, and it's like, yeah, but Victor's never been the biggest when it comes to listening to people, you know, and especially if you try to, like, oppose the way he runs things, like, it's going to be a whole issue, so... But I love that June's like, right, I tried to, I thought I had Virginia's ear, and look how that all played out. This isn't going to work, John. He's like, it has to. 
So, because if it doesn't, this is all going to fall apart, because eventually, Alicia's going to come back with some people, um... Obviously, there's the whole Arnold situation. He's rallying up his people to make a move. Then you also have uh, Morgan and every like once Morgan and meets up with Alicia and other people, like this is going to be a full blown war. There's going to be a lot of death. So probably I don't know whether John realizes that, or at the very least, it's just right the way this place is operated. It can't go on like this forever. So maybe just simply that. And June apologizes to. Charlie, because she's like, right, I should have never let you go to that uh, place in the first, like that place, facility in the first place. And Charlie's like, why did you let me go? And for June, it's like, because I've been using this place as a way to hide, just like that bunker. She didn't, everything became an escape post losing John, that the world became too much, just like. When she lost her daughter, it became too much. Became Naomi and just kept moving from place to place and just kind of was a little self-centered and never stayed in any one place, right? So, she's using this place as an excuse to hide away. And she's like, right, my hiding never hurt anyone until now. And because of that, like, you're in a situation you're in right now. You're sick. Maybe this whole Ollie thing wouldn't have happened if I had just said, like, no and convinced you not to go if I didn't let you go. To be fair, Charlie had made up her mind, but maybe if June had probably, maybe in June's mind, like, if I had done a little bit more to convince you not to do it. But she also did it because, like, right, Morgan, too. So it's like, I'm curious how to see how that all plays out. But ultimately, June's like, I'm going to make whatever time you have left mean as much as possible. And you're going to stick around long enough to see um, Strand fall. So the thing is, though, now she's sick. Grace was sick too. Granted, Grace was pregnant, but obviously that turned out the way it did. Plus, there's a the whole Alicia thing too. So, like, it's interesting parallels that are going on there. So, I wonder is it really be it will be heartbreaking and maybe on some level. I'm curious what, how Charlie's going to feel about it because obviously for a long time, like the Nick stuff is obviously kind of like a ways behind them. Obviously, Alicia found a way forward from all of that. So, I'm curious um, now that Charlie's sick and if when Alicia finds out about it, like maybe Charlie on some level will still be like, right, it's almost like it, the war karma finally catching up to me or something. I'm curious will she had that perspective on it because I think, once again, that influence, her past is what influenced a lot of the decisions she made to try and do things a different way this episode. And then, like, the last shot of the episode is of that butterfly, you know? It's like, we don't know how long we have, so we kind of have to let life be as beautiful as it is. And it's just, it's very heartbreaking, like, this young love, you know, started sprouting just for it to end this way and kind of sucks. So once again, it's The Walking Dead. So that's all. That's why I always have to kind of watch this show first to get it out of the way. Cause I'm like, man, this is going to be depressing. And that's why I always like, have a little hesitancy to watch this show because I'm like, I don't want to get depressed. This show's depressing. It's not real world depressing. Like, like I think I think like a euphoria seems like it would just like crush your soul to some extent this i'm just like uh like it's it's just um, it's just depressing so that's why like walking dead stuff i'm always just kind of like all right gotta gotta do it so we'll ultimately have to wait and see where the next where everything ends up taking us going forward into the next episode i saw the next episode title which was really interesting so i'm assuming it's going to be a daniel episode because of the title i saw We'll have to wait and see. I, I I didn't watch any of the preview. I'm just assuming that just by the episode title. But uh, I'm excited to see where all of this ends up taking us going forward to the next episode. Uh, but really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.